No gratuitous shower scenes in today's movie, but Linnea Quigley, Brink Stevens, and Michelle Bauer have the longest gratuitous bath scene I've ever encountered. It has to count for something, right? Welcome to Sick Flicks, where I take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to help you embrace your inner gore geek. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're tackling David Dakota's cult classic horror comedy, Nightmare Sisters. Released in 1988, this one reunites the leading ladies from Sorority Babes in the Slimeball Bolorama for a sexy supernatural film. Hailed as a four-day wonder because Dakota shot this in under a week, this one delivers exactly what you'd expect from a Quigley Stevens Bauer film. But enough about that. Can Nightmare Sister spill enough of the red stuff to earn a coveted five barf bag rating? Let's get to the gore and find out. Oh, and before we get started, today's movie is sponsored by patrons Neil Richardson, Darian Allen, and Barcom. If you'd like to help sponsor some videos and free me from the shackles of YouTube's arbitrary community guidelines nonsense, you'll find a link to my Patreon in the pinned comment in the description below. Your support helps make this show possible. And now, let's get bloody. We fade in on the credits. Dave Dakota presents. Guess Dave was feeling pretty informal on this one since he's usually credited as David. After giving Dave his props on three separate cards, we head over here. It's nice I can get my palm read and taxes done at the same time. Hey, Omar is Dookie Flyswatter. You might remember him as live action Mo Sizzlack from Hollywood Chainsaw Escorts. Yeah, you're not getting me on the H word again, prude tube. Oh god, is this customer Alex Kintner's mom? Is she gonna slap Chief Brody for not closing the beaches? I'd like to take a moment to appreciate the level of acting in this scene. Truly, two thespians at the top of their game. It's sort of about your late husband. No, I mean, my husband is sort of... late. The Oscars clearly snubbed these two. Perhaps you should explain what did or did not happen to your husband. I will say this, his fortune teller accent is terrible, but he's still better than Miss Cleo. You kids even remember Miss Cleo? Christ, I'm old. Okay, smokes. That's a lot of ashes. It's also kind of wild that he looks like a real life Mo, but here his accent is 100% Quickie Marta Poo. Not gonna lie, after watching three minutes of this scene, I totally believe that the script for this movie was written in a week. Hell, I'd believe you if you told me it was written in seven hours. With payment out of the way, Omar gets busy fondling his ball. Hell yeah. <laughs> no, not like that, you pervs. His crystal ball. Oh god, now he's got a blue green ball. I hate when that happens. Man, old Dookie is chewing the shit out of the scenery here. There are probably teeth marks on the film. He summons her dead husband, which causes her to summon her fiercest pimp hand. Anyway, this erotic encounter of the spiritual kind doesn't have the happy ending you might have expected. He beat him in the... He beat him in the... You could say he really popped his top over this. Fun fact, those are Linnea Quigley's hands in the demon gloves. Probably not the Quigley skin you were hoping to see. And title card. I love that 80s B-movies couldn't even be bothered to try with the title cards. Yeah, just slap some generic text on a black background. No one cares, and this movie will have 17 other names anyway. Starring Linnea Quigley. Place your bets on the number of gratuitous showers she'll take in this movie now. And here's Brink Stevens. There's clearly going to be a lot of skin in this one. Plus Michelle McClellan, who you know better as Michelle Bauer. Bauer used McClellan for a series of films after a divorce. And let's take a moment to enjoy the Nightmare Sisters theme song while we're here. These classic lyrics come courtesy of Haunted Garage, a band led by none other than Dookie Flyswatter. Written by Kenneth Hall, who also wrote Evil Spawn and shared a story credit on Puppet Master. And produced and directed by Dave Dakota. This whole project basically came together when Dakota was challenged to make a film in four days with leftover 35mm film from Sorority Babes in the Slimeball Bolorama. We then jump immediately to a sorority house establishing shot. The same one from Sorority Babes in the Slimeball Bolorama. Hmm, no idea this was a Seymour Butts movie. Wait a minute, is this nerdy Linnea Quigley? She's like a trailer park Britney Spears. Fun fact, Quigley kept a lot of the props from this movie, including her buck teeth prosthetic ear. What? Brink Stevens is a nerd too, but I was promised hot scream queens. Thanks a lot. And I'm not sure if this is Michelle Bauer or Bjorn Borg. Turns out Brink Stevens is getting ready to appear on an episode of Hoarders. This is becoming a compulsion. But her flea market haul does reveal one treasure, Dookie's crystal ball. Peering into a crystal ball, you'd think they'd have seen all the bad things coming in the near future. Do you mean I'm holding? 
holding a dead medium's ball? Oh, come on, Michelle. It's not like it's the first time. Turns out these Poindexters are home alone for the weekend, too. Everybody is gone for the weekend. Of course. An empty sorority house means these girls can go wild. Let's have a party. I'm sure this is gonna go great. You hose monster. <laughs> what the hell? Did she just call her a hose monster? You hose monster. <laughs> Fraternity house establishing shot. Man, the Poindexter quotient in this movie is off the charts. Gonna need a fancy scientific calculator to even do the math of it. Things get even more exciting when McLovin here gets a phone call. No, I do not want to learn more about my car's extended warranty. Quigley, meanwhile, is on the phone with her agent. Can I stop wearing these terrible fake teeth if I just agree to do an extra shower scene? I mean, really, this is basically what was on the end of the line every time you called one of those 976 numbers back in the 90s. Me and a couple friends from Try Eat a Pie are having a party. Ah, yes, Try Eat a Pie. I'm not gonna lie, that's probably better writing than you get on this show. She's the one with the great big smile. Yep, just like calling a 900 number, or so I've heard. I don't know, guys, this gender-swapped Revenge of the Nerds is pretty entertaining so far. I have no idea why, but this guy has given me strong Steve from Blue's Clues vibes. I just got a call from Melody Hoffmeyer. Oh shit, it's a young Mike Nelson. Guess he flunked out of college and went to work for Dr. Forrester. The glasses she wears make up half her body weight. I don't know if you should be snapping on anyone over glasses, my dude. You can mount an entire colony of ants with yours. Then a spirited game of grab-ass breaks out. College really is a time for experimentation, apparently. This is interrupted by the arrival of Amazon Basics' Chet Donnelly. Sweet Creepazoids poster back there, too. It's very meta to work in a reference to a David Dakota, Linnea Quigley film in another David Dakota, Linnea Quigley film. I feel like these three should start some sort of sweater-themed band. Like, for sweater or for worse, maybe. Anyway, Head Nerd says exactly what I'm thinking. Look, you guys, this is ridiculous. And time for another great moment in horror film acting. This alters everything. I had no idea you were so friendly with our sorority sisters. You can practically see him reading these lines off the cue card. All right, guys, we got band rehearsal. I want to lay down vocals on a new song called Sweater Half. Those bastards, they can't get away with this. Linda? Show them how it's done. Bastard! Bastard! And sorority house establishing shot. It's a lot easier to make a movie in four days when you just keep dropping establishing shots in it. Oh yeah, this party looks great. The paper plate with five Twizzlers is a nice touch. Also, why is Michelle Bauer wearing a shower curtain? I mean, it's either that or it's a Snuggie. But things are already looking better because a PA dropped off new script pages. Says here I need to do a shower scene soon. And the good news is the geeks are here. And not a moment too soon since we're 30 minutes into this 80 minute movie. Might be nice if something happened at some point. Oh yeah, this is about as awkward as walking in on Grandma getting out of the shower. Next, we check out Captain and Tennille hard at work on their new remix version of Love Will Keep Us Together. While that's going on, Brink and this dork are going over some pages. Yeah, nothing happens for the foreseeable future in this movie. And Mike Nelson's over here chugging old Milwaukee. <laughs> Probably should get back to the satellite of love. Crow and Servo can't be trusted. And now he's gonna mansplain the premise of the show. You see, he sends me cheesy movies. The worst he can find. I have to sit and watch them all while he monitors my mind. And he's still going. Now, keep in mind, I can't control where the movies begin or end. And now the party can really get started because we've got Twister. Back at the frat house, Chet and the Sweatermen realize they've been fooled by the Ferris Bueller's Day Off Gambit. Those sons of bitches! Man, these guys really do look like they stepped out of a Chess King holiday catalog circa 1989. Back at the sorority house, everyone settles in for a rousing game of strip D&D. No, oh, never mind. Brink has a better idea. Why don't we have a seance? Great, maybe they can summon up some interesting plot developments. Michelle's over here regaling Mike about the time she had to sit through the final sacrifice. It's tampering with things that man is not meant to know. Hey, I saw that movie too. Then this happens. You know what they say about girls who wear glasses? Um, that they have poor eyesight? Need corrective lenses? Anyway, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but I kind of hope they summon Dookie Flyswatter back into this movie. I mean, there's nowhere to go but up. I must encant the six names of power. Corman, Franco, D'Amato, Drudy, Fragasso, Matei. Clearly, contacting the dead is more of a pseudoscience than an actual science. All I got for their trouble was Dookie. Dude's looking green with envy. 
But it sounds like they at least got Ravi Shankar to play the sitar on the soundtrack at least. What happened to you? <laughs> Ravi Shankar. That's a deep cut. And it turns out Dookie is here to deliver some important exposition from beyond the grave. Even now the females are among you are in very great danger. <laughs> we'll say that Dookie is the greatest talking head since David Byrne though. Turns out Dookie just wants them to feel his ball. Hell yeah. <laughs> no, not like that you pervs, his crystal ball. Man, I haven't seen people this green since Linda Day George in Beyond Evil. And sorority house establishing shot. Judging by this rolling brown out, they must be in California. And now our nerds are all babelicious scream queens. <laughs> I'd show you, but they lost their tops in the transformation, and we know Prudtube hates boobs. Fun fact, this movie is only about 80 minutes long and has a decent amount of topless scream queens in it. When USA wanted to run the film, they had to go back and do reshoots four years later to replace all the stuff they couldn't show. <laughs> Look at these dorks. They're like, yeah, I got three pairs. Poindexter number three sounds almost disappointed by this. You gotta be kidding, I mean, those lights, those voices. And another sorority house establishing shot. I mean, this movie basically has two locations, so it's vitally important we remember where we are. The girls take the nerds to the kitchen so they can sample some pie. Hell yeah. No, I mean real peach pie. But I can't even show it because of the lack of clothes. The rest of this video might be a challenge. The pie eating contest is interrupted when Chet and the Sweatermen show up. Girls head off to get clean while the boys are like, that was some mighty fine pie. And no gratuitous shower scene, instead we get a gratuitous bathtub scene. And yeah, a lot of boobs there that prude to will lose their mind over. I'll give David Dakota this, if you're gonna have a boring scene where the guys figure out something weird is happening, it's way better to do it as a voiceover with Linnea, Brink, and Michelle soaping each other up in a bathtub. Focus. Poindexter number three feels something is amiss, but don't fret, he has an idea. What do you expect us to do? Call Ghostbusters? <laughs> Honestly, you'd probably be better off calling fathers Marin and Karis. And now they're trying to check out the show. You could call this peak performance. With the sheer amount of boob soaping happening in there, I think it's safe to say these ladies really are the breast. I mean, it's utterly ridiculous how many topless scenes we've had so far. But our lead nerd knows something is off. Something is very wrong here. I mean, sure, the first clue is women wanting to hook up with these dorks. And Chet and the crew are trying to get a peek too. I haven't seen this much peeping since my Easter basket last year. I mean, really, I think the whole second half of this movie is going to take place in the bathtub. And Chet has a plan. No, this calls for some covert activity. Huh? Snakey stuff. Wait, this dude got into college and he doesn't know what covert means? With no idea how to score, the nerds huddle up on the couch. Michelle comes to lure Mike Nelson away, which leads to this. Do you think he can handle it alone? I hope so. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sure this guy is a veteran at handling it alone, if you catch my drift. Over in the kitchen, Brink's licking a lollipop. Hell yeah. <laughs> no, 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 an actual lollipop. Thank God she has a top on so I can actually show it. They head outside and clearly this movie has lost its focus. <laughs> Again. And over in another movie, I can't believe it's not Mike Nelson has found a new satellite of love. Dude looks like he's having a great time. Mike can't close the deal, but one of the sweater dudes looks like he's up to the task. Think about baseball and dead kittens. Baseball and dead kittens. Or maybe call an orthodontist because Michelle Bauer clearly needs braces. If you're wondering what happened to Linnea Quigley, she's over here showing off her Bernadette Peters in Scrooged cosplay. Looking good. Oh god, now she's Lita Ford. Not sure if this is the lighting or if this dude's actually turning red after watching Linnea dance around half naked. Say what you will, but Stevie Nicks' solo work was solid. But while Poindexter's distracted, Chet and his buddy make their move. This feels like another outtake from Night Trap. Looks like Linnea's really got a leg up on the competition here. This dude's like, so do you think you could do I'm Too Sexy for an encore? And he's got a slick pickup line. I'm the plumber. Somebody called about a leaky faucet. I sure hope he's not going to offer to snake out her pipe. Over in another movie, our nerds are all tied up. It is pretty impressive that Chet managed to keep his sweater tied around his neck while doing all of this strenuous physical activity. We then jump back to Linnea, who's about to bite off more than she can chew. I really thought she was going to put the suck and succubus here, but looks like she'd rather use her teeth. Demon hands, an overbite, and these teeth. Linnea sure got to use a ton of prosthetics in this one. Wait, did he get killed by Claudio Fragasso? Clearly the lovin' was so hot he spontaneously combusted. I've heard of cleaning up afterwards, but this seems on the nose. And don't look now, but it appears Chet's about to partake in a handicap match. The nerds, meanwhile, are feeling pretty naughty. You know, because they're still tied up. 
Chet's apparently wandered into this weird bedroom. I'm guessing he was expecting a different kind of toy in here. Man, I haven't heard this much whipping since Devo. And don't look now, but the nerds are free. There's been a real dearth of splatter in this movie, but I guess all the skin kinda makes up for it. And it looks like Chet forgot the safe word. Then he goes up in smoke. Like it's a Cheech and Chong movie. With the sweater crew gone, our heroes do what they should have done from the start. Find an exorcist. Fortunately, there's one right here in the yellow pages. <laughs> I bet most of you kids don't even remember phone books either. Lanchester Perrin, exorcist. <laughs> Lanchester Perrin? Very subtle movie. Before they call him, they quickly touch base with David Dakota. Yeah, Dave, we're almost to the end and we really haven't had any gore. Any chance we can fix that? No, but I can give you a sorority house establishing shot. Oh God, why does the exorcist look like Woody Allen? I also love that it's pretty clear the exorcist and the dorks aren't even on the same set. I will say it's great we can bring the movie to a crashing halt here with tons of exposition that we already knew. <laughs> Nothing like a little padding. They bit his dork and he crumbled to dust. This is no ordinary demon you have here. This is a succubus. Yeah, way ahead of you, man. Can we just move it along already? I will need a variety of herbs. This really means he just needs to get baked beforehand. With the plan made, Poindexter 3 sets things in motion. Avon calling. He leads them out, and in the immortal words of Admiral Akbar, it's a trap. Believe it or not, they actually fell for this. Also, I'm not sure why they're upset. Pretty sure all three of these ladies have been tied up before. First rule of exorcism is never fraternize with demons. And the second rule of exorcism club is we don't talk about exorcism club. Now he kind of looks like Tom Bosley, exorcist. But surprisingly enough, it looks like this actually worked. That was way too easy. I told you, getting rid of a succubus isn't that easy. See, told you. And here comes the actual succubus. Looks like Eddie from Iron Maiden in drag, kinda. Oh yeah, she is a real hottie. The exorcist is ready though. In fact, you could say he has a real cross to bear. Just insert your own burning cross joke here. I'm not trying to get demonetized. Again. Fortunately, Father Cunningham has one last trick up his sleeve. The herb bag. Except... It didn't work. Well, I'm out of ideas. But Linnea Quigley still has one trick left. The crystal is the source of her power. With the succubus distracted, our lead Poindexter grabs the crystal ball and chucks it into the yard. <laughs> nice spaghetti arm, dude. You managed to heave that thing like five whole yards. Worst Roman candle ever. Inside, the succubus seems shocked by this development. That's gonna make one sweet Maiden album cover, though. And just like that, the succubus is defeated. Huzzah! And in the least shocking twist ever, all our nerds are gonna hook up. But I feel a swerve ending coming. Wait for it. Yeah, there it is. Cue credits. So, what have we learned from Nightmare Sisters? Well, for starters, that if you hire Linnea Quigley, Michelle Bauer, and Bring Stevens, you can kill a lot of your running time with gratuitous bath scenes. These ladies should be very clean at this point. In fact, you could probably eat off of them. But enough about that. Can Nightmare Sisters devour enough men to earn a coveted five barf bag rating? <laughs> no chance. But let's go to the gore card. In terms of gross anatomy, Nightmare Sisters is very light. Dakota made this one in four days with limited funds, so it's not surprising he didn't let himself get bogged down with elaborate effect shots. He just didn't have the time or the money. There's a decently cool looking demon puppet, some prosthetics work, and that's about it. The kills are disappointingly devoid of splatter. I'm a sucker for a good latex puppet appliance, so I'm gonna give Nightmare Sisters a very generous one barf bag rating. This is not a sick flick, but fans of Quigley, Bauer, and Stevens aren't gonna mind the lack of gore. Looking for another film featuring these three lovely ladies? Then be sure to check out my review of Sorority Babes in the Slimeball Bolorama. You'll find a link here on the screen. I'll meet you over there. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters.